morning everybody uh it's miss keisha journey of the word today we're going to be talking about um how we operate in society today excuse me guys um i'm going to be using uh ezekiel 36 and 23 but i'm going to start it with 22 um there's a few the the key word here that I want everybody to understand before we actually read this verse is the word profane. Um, in Hebrew, the word profane is shalal. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but what it means is to pollute or defile. Um, in Latin, it's profaneness, and it means that you're going outside of the temple. So what they're saying is that um, if something is profane, it's literally against the temple. Uh, when we sin... It's a way of us violating or profaning God's holiness, okay? So, let's read the scripture real quick. Therefore, say to the Israelites, this is what the sovereign Lord says. It is not for your sake, people of Israel, that I'm going to do these things, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profane among the nations where you have gone. I will show the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, the name you have profaned among them. And depending on um, which version you're reading, it will say um, that when I am proved holy through you before their eyes. So, <clears throat> what God is talking about, excuse me, guys, is he, he hasn't ignored the fact, and this is why I say I want to talk about what we're currently doing, how we're currently living. Um, he tells the Israelites, your behavior, your attitude, the things that you're showing people in the different places of those who are looking at you have, are in, like, you know how profanity, uh, the word profanity, I'm all over the place here, y'all, I'm sorry, but profanity, we know that's cursing, that's bad language, that's speaking ill, so if we profane God, if we profane his name, then we're in a sense, uh, putting all that same type of negativity towards him. We're representing him. We're misrepresenting him to those who are looking upon us, to those who see what we do. And right now I'm, I'm speaking to those of us who say that we love God, those of us who say that we believe in God, those of us who say that um, we represent whatever particular religion that you are um, that is supposed to be um, faithful to showing the holiness and pureness of God. Your actions, your words, your treatment of others, your treatment of yourself, how you carry yourself. We continue to profane the name of God. We continue to. Um, we continue to make him look less than what he is. We continue to not represent him as holy, as loving, as fair. Um, he goes on to tell us that he is going to show the holiness of his great name. <clears throat> and it'll be through us, the same type of people that are misrepresenting him. So you're going to need to think about how you handle yourself when you're going through a test, a trial, a struggle, day-to-day -day life, your interactions with other people. Because how you handle yourself is how you're representing God. You're a physical representation of him. When you say, well, well, how am I supposed to know what to do? Read your word. Study your word. Um, there used to be a saying, what would Jesus do? And for those of you who don't believe in Jesus, I'll pray for you. But uh, ign ignore that and think about what it's actually asking you. In any situation that you're in, what would the Son of God do? What decisions would he make? What things would he consider before that? Before he opens his mouth, before um, he makes a decision, before he takes an action on that. We have literally made a mockery of the name of God. Um, we've literally made a, a mockery of the things that he stands on and believes in. We've represented things so, so horribly that people feel they can justly blame God for the things that they are enduring or the things that are in this world. When the truth of the matter is that. God outlined everything for us. Um, he gave us an instruction manual. 
you know, when you, when you get something, you want to put it together, and it, it didn't come all put together, they give you an instruction manual. God gave us a detailed instruction manual. It's not three pages. Just about everything that you can think of is in that Bible. If you can pull yourself out of um, <clears throat> the way the words are said because they're not in current date, or remove yourself from thinking, oh, that's thousands of years ago. That doesn't pertain to now because the same exact situations <clears throat> that happen in Scripture are happening today. The same exact, no different. So you can find a story in that Bible with God's principles aligned to show you what was the best choice to make. And uh, in most of those stories, you're going to find somebody who's making the wrong choice, which could be similar to what you're thinking about doing. That'll show you the wrong way out. You just have to read. Another important thing to do, and I think that that's the hardest thing that we, especially here in, in the United States or um, people in, in outside, well, excuse me, <clears throat> outside of Israel or countries where they're, they, they are, it's not a place that automatically understand what those words in prefixes and things meant in their original language in those original contexts we get lost we think that what we read is exactly what it means we fail to realize that you do need to go back and find out okay this word means what in that language in that time frame this story was written <coughs> let's say just i'm just saying a thousand years ago and in this country, at this time, this word would have meant what? Okay, so when I'm reading it, I know now that that's not, it can't mean what it means here for us. It has to mean what it means there for them. And that'll give you a better understanding of the directions being given to you. Um, God has warned us what will happen if we live in sin. It said that um, to profane the name of God. Or to profane something, to live outside of the temple. You're living outside of the temple. You're living a, a life of sin, of things against God. Um, our body is our temple. Our temple belongs to God. If you spend all your time, if you spend all your decisions, if you spend a majority of your life not even respecting what the vessel that God has given you for this purpose, for this time, what can you say? <laughs> God teaches us to love one another. Loving one another is the greatest commandment of all. We spend more time every single day talking bad about people, wishing bad on them, judging them, uh, going against them. <coughs> we'll walk past the hungry and say something like, oh, they just want to get a drink or they just want to buy drugs. If you have an extra dollar in your pocket, and you're not doing nothing with it. It's not on you what they're going to do with the money. It's on you whether you're being a cheerful, joyful giver. Whether you're aspiring to make a difference in that person's life. You can get him a dollar. It ain't hurting you. You're you going to waste that dollar anyway. You can give him a dollar and tell him God bless him. You can give him a little bit of scripture. Because nine times out of ten, even if, the, if they're asking for money from strangers, they're going to listen to what you have to say. So you can take a quick 60 seconds to say something that you think may be impressionable about them. Not walk past them in judgment. It's just, it's not, it's not a valid excuse. To say that you don't like someone <coughs> or they made you mad is not a valid excuse to stop loving them, to stop being considerate of them, to stop keeping your word to them. That's not love. If you love somebody... Whether you guys are on a talking basis or not, you don't stop communicating with them. You don't cut the love off and not care what happens to them. That's not how it works. And we fail to realize that. We make God to look out to be hateful. What do we do when things are going wrong for us, but we're supposed to be God-fearing? We blame God. Uh, we victimize our own selves in the, in the eyes of others. We don't take responsibility for our actions or our part in that. We fail to mention, you know what, this, this, is, this is life. Bad things happen to everyone. 
Um, even Jesus had things happen to him way worse than we ever could. And he was the literal son of God. Um, what gives you the right to be hateful, angry, and nasty? But you're a quote unquote, I'm using the word Christian because just because that's the common word, you know, or, or you're a God fearing person, you're representing this to people, but you're nasty. You're hateful. You're evil. You're blaming God. You're speaking out of turn. Uh, our, in Job, I don't know. If, if you read Job, most people have that are within scripture, but Job is a good story. So, so Job is a man that was used in between the discussion and the battle and example between God and the devil. So, of course, the devil is like, you know, these people only praise you when they get what they want, when you're doing something for them. If you take something for them or, or you harm them or anywhere, don't allow them to have something, they're not going to love you. <clears throat> God says, have you considered my servant Job? Job lost everything, you guys. His family, his health, his land, his money, everything. And he still remained faithful unto God. He didn't question God. Um, he had a, a moment where his wife told him, to, hey, you know what, you might as well just go ahead and curse curse God this is not working you being a fool his friends didn't understand how um he was doing this um in a drunken stupor he said the Lord give it and the Lord take it away he still wasn't angry with God and he was intoxicated he was saying it's God's will to do whatever he wants God gave back to him more than he had because Job always represented the fact that God was a pure and loving God that God told us what was right and wrong. And that he was willing to trust God in everything. That's what we need to do. We need to wipe away the anger. We need to stop doing devious, shisty things. We need to stop trying to make our own way. We need to stop scheming. We need to stop taking our shortcuts. We need to stop pointing fingers. We need to carry ourselves better in situations even if we didn't cause them. Your reaction will change so many things for you and I just think of yourself as a walking billboard so you are demonstrating to the rest of the world what the name of God means in your life how holy he is in your life how he is upholding you how he is bringing you through your trials how he is teaching you and changing you from the inside out so you're a walking billboard before you say anything, before you do anything, before you make any actions, and how you live your day-to-day -day life. Remember, those looking at you are seeing God. Are you slandering him? Are you a part of the problem that's profaning his holy name to all the nations? Are you a part of the discouraging people, the young people, especially today, who don't know Jesus, who don't know God? Are you part of the reason that they're turning from God? Are they looking at you and saying, if that's a God, that's the results of serving God, I don't want no part of it. That's what I would like for you to consider. Um, what are your actions showing? How are your actions making God look? Are you representing his grace, his mercy, his holiness? And no, I'm not telling you that you have to be perfect. I'm not being unrealistic here. That's not what I'm doing at all. But So don't be extreme and drastic because no one's perfect. <clears throat> There's no one without sin. But there's a difference in being intentional in what you do and doing things accidentally. There's a difference in living in habitual sin and sinning. Habitual sin is the intent, purposeful act of doing something, knowing that it's wrong and not caring against God. We all struggle with things. Struggling with sin and trying to stop things is not habitual sin. But when a person looks at you, they'll see that that inner struggle going on they'll see that battle oh, such and such is truly not a bad person such and such truly wants to please God they're just having a little bit of an issue here and I was about to close but I have to say one more thing um and it's, it's a little different it's honestly it's to pastors this this is to pastors preachers or those who feel like they want to critique pastors and preachers and and people who who are brave enough to try and spread the word now, some people are just in it for money, fame, exploitism. Guess what? That's between them and God, not you. Stop taking so much time to worry about 
where this person who is dedicating a part of their life to spreading the word of God is going to go. If they go on a hill, that's not between you and, and them. That's between you and God. Stop criticizing them because you don't like their uh, delivery of their word. Stop criticizing them because you feel like they should be in a certain position. Um, broke, busted, disgusted. Um, I ain't rich. I'm not well off. I'm not upper class. I'm not any of that. But I don't look at T.D. Jakes and get mad. Uh, who they be talking about? T.D. Jakes, uh, Michael Todd, Stephen Furtick. Uh, <clears throat> I don't look at these people. Um, There's another pastor. I can't think of his name right now. I know he had cheated on his wife or something. But we dissect these people's personal lives. They're still just men and women. They are. They're going to sin. They're going to make mistakes. Just like you. They're not above reproach. They're trying to be. And they've chosen a field. <clears throat> for the betterment of the world. So stop standing in judgment of them. Anybody who's doing the delivery of the word. The Bible gives them a warning already. Telling them that. They're going to answer to a higher call and so they're going to be judged maybe a little bit harsher i'm not sure but they know that they're supposed to be doing a little bit better they don't need you to worry about that <clears throat> we don't need you to worry about that we don't need you to continue to tear down the people who are trying to reach the younger sheep the lost sheep the sheep who don't even know Jesus' name I hear a lot of people complaining about their being entertaining versus speaking the word of God. Let them be entertaining. Let them be. For they get these young kids' attention. As long as scripture is in there, scripture is not twisted, and the real meaning is being represented to these kids to open up the possibility of them serving God, be quiet. Just be quiet. If you don't think that a man or a woman's lifestyle that's preaching is up to Par, that's God's job, not yours. Mind your business. Because they're going to reach somebody. It's just like if you went to church just to catch girls or just to catch a man, but a sermon was preached that day and it got you. As long as God's word gets through, mind your business. Okay? Pray for them. Don't talk about them. I have had the conversation about my own self just because I'm a female. So many times I want to throw up that I'm going to go to hell. Because I'm speaking the word of God because I'm teaching Guess what? I don't want to go to hell at all. But I'm pretty sure if I go to hell, it will not be for trying to teach others about God. And if I had to go to hell for anything, I'd rather go to hell for loving God. Having the devil mess with me because you want to know what? I know my father is going to save me and he's going to get me and spare me and bring me where I need to be. Maybe I'll bring some souls from hell up to heaven with me. And that goes the same for all these pastors and preachers that you're talking about. And I want to say one more thing. You guys get angry when they have money. <laughs> You get angry at the house of Cardi. These pastors have other jobs. You guys forget to look at the beginning of where they came from to where they are now. If God has blessed them with a voice, a skill, anything to get, if they can make movies, if they can write books, if they have a job, if they open companies, God's blessed them. God says that what he has for us is greater than we can ever imagine. So stop thinking you got to be a broke, busted, disgusted, bored, mortar to love God. Y'all have a blessed day, and thank you for joining me at Journey of the Word Ministries, home of every name known to God, where we are nurturing relationship, not religion, y'all. Stop being religious. That's cultural. God didn't invent that. Y'all did. Love y'all.